Sarah from Natural Shore. We're here for another little episode of Natural Shore Book Club. This month we're doing Midwest Foraging uh, by Lisa M. Rose. It's 115 wild and flavorful edibles from burdock to wild peach. And we uh, collected a few here, a couple examples of some things you can forage and eat. Um, Sarah, I thought this book was laid out really well. I like how in the beginning it talks about what you should um, forage during the different seasons. Like for example, here's fall and it tells you all the things that are available right now that you should be looking for. Um, probably what's not on this list right now is, oh, it is sumac berries. Okay, we, we foraged some sumac to make some sumac lemonade. Um, this was the result. Um, here we go. I'm gonna try it. That's not too bad. It's, it doesn't taste as fresh. I don't think they, they um, definitely recommend to, to eat or gather them when they're more succulent and fresh and these were not so. Does it have that lemon flavor they talk about? It's a little lemony but also a little bit dirt like. <laughs> so maybe we'll add some honey. We got some honey that um, one of our our clients so nicely gave us so um yeah and we have some tea as well yep. with nettle and dandelion root tracy forged those earlier this spring so yep i got dried out some singing nettle it the book talks about how exactly to collect it so you don't get stung by um little hairs on it and we i just dried that out um here's the dandelion root i actually roasted that in the oven and um mashed it up a little bit so that's what we have in our in our little tea and I think it's really good um, it is good it's real mild mm -hmm. uh, we didn't add honey but I think honey would be a good addition yeah. we tossed in some anise hyssop leaves too for a little bit of anise flavor yep and this is bergamot that's also in the book um, I tried to collect more of the non-native species in the book just you know because they're weeds I feel kind of bad collecting some of the non-native, or I mean the native stuff, but I mean a lot of this is done blooming now and the leaves are still good for the minty flavor, so we collect a little bit of that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I like the layout of the book. It's super user friendly. Mm -hmm. um, not too much information, but just enough if you don't know much. For example, there's like how to identify it. Um, how to gather it, when to gather it, and how to prepare it too. Right. Like, it's one thing to know something's edible, but how do you make it tasty is the other part. Of right, it. yeah, and um, it also talks about future harvests of every single plant, where if there's a certain species that maybe you don't wanna over harvest, it talks about that. Um, uh, in many cases in this book, though, the plants are not rare or anything there's something that'll grow really quickly but um I, one example in here where they talk about being careful of over harvesting is the wild leeks so i like how they put that in the book where they talk about hey don't over harvest or future harvest will be affected yeah like cutting the plant instead of digging it up uh, mm -hmm. if you dig it up you're taking the whole plant and it won't come back but if you right. take cuttings it'll usually continue to come back yeah, it goes into detail about nutritional benefits of these plants. Um, it's got great pictures. Yeah, for example, with the nutritional benefit, some of these plants, especially in their root systems, they contain a lot of minerals and vitamins that usually people take as supplements, but wild plants contain a lot. Mm -hmm. um, in curly dock, or just any kind of dock, um, the root is full of iron and other minerals, so it can be a, um, a good way to supplement your diet. Yeah. Yeah, um, and there's a lot of examples in this book of tasty little greens that you can add to your salad. Um, one example here I found today on one of our sites is it's called watercress. Um, this is something that you can actually buy in the store, and it's really peppery flavor. It smells really good, um, and it's yeah, it's really fun to collect too. It's really easy to collect. One thing they mention in the book too that I think is a good thing to be aware of uh, is to know the history or at least the if there's been any maintenance on the site and if you're not collecting stuff that's been sprayed by maybe the Department of Transportation or other groups so you don't want stuff that's um, heavy in 
an herbicide um, or there's also some plants that take up heavy metals and things like that so they talk about that in the book too just to be careful of where the sources of the plants you're collecting so right. yeah I thought this was a great book I've been using it quite a bit this last uh, year since I got it we do a forager fix in our newsletter and this has been super super helpful and I think it's a fun new hobby that um, I've been getting into more with this COVID-19 stuff. It's a great way to get outside and um, get in touch with nature a little bit and and kind of find things around you that you can put in your tea and stuff. So yeah. it's fun. And you don't have to forage all 115 no. things to be a good forager. You can just find a couple of your favorites. Like one of my favorites is service berry. I grew up yeah. collecting those in North Dakota with my grandma and they make awesome pies and jams. Oh, that's and cool. That's one of my favorites and that's a native shrub too. But you know, you're just collecting the berries so you're not really hurting the tree. Right. Yeah, we always go blueberry um, collecting every year. So that's one of my favorites. I've also, like I, we come into contact with so much of these weeds on um, our maintenance visits that I really like all the new ones that I'm kind of collecting for for stuff from just what we weed every day. So I would say stingy nettle is probably one of my new favorites. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of stuff you can use in soups and salads and there's just a lot of unique ways to use some of these plants that um, You know, I, I might not have appreciated so much before because you know, we we're just thinking of them as weeds But if everyone thought of them as a way to like supplement their diet Then that would be really helpful in eradicating some of these species too. So that's another thing to think about So everyone should get this book and go eat all the weeds in their yard <laughs> Thanks.